Hi, this is Greg McCoach, editor of The Mining Speculator. I'm here today with CEO Trey Wasser of Ely Gold Royalty. We're at the March 1st Toronto Metals Investor Forum. Trey, we're doing the coronavirus bump <laughs> instead of handshakes here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me, Greg. It's, yeah, uh, yeah uh, it, it's actually a pretty good turnout here in Toronto. Uh, I just hope we don't get quarantined here. So. Yeah, yeah, we don't want that to happen for sure. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyway, well, you and I were just talking about how we want to structure. You have so much news lately. You, you, we could talk about a lot of things. We could go a lot of different directions in this interview. Obviously, your share price has is, is risen dramatically recently, which you know makes it exciting for investors. But I think what we what would be valuable in this discussion is let's let's go back a little bit. You know, I've been with you guys from the get go when we had Mount Hamilton, and when that didn't work out, we sold the project. We got a bunch of cash, and you guys switched gears. And that was what three, three and a half years ago. About, about three and a half years ago, when uh, uh, of course John passed away, and I hooked up with Jerry uh, Bachman, and uh, you know, such an experienced guy, and knows so much about Nevada. You know, and, and from Mount Hamilton, we we loved Nevada and wanted to focus on that jurisdiction. So we teamed up with Jerry and and basically bought his company. Uh, and he came on board to run the royalty company and be boots on the ground in Nevada. Yeah. At that point, we, he had about 24 properties spread across the state, uh, one royalty and about four or five properties in the, in the sale program. Um, fast forward to today, we've got 30, four, oh, excuse, well, we just, the new deal, it's always moving even for me. Uh, 42 royalties, three of which are producing. We think we'll have five, maybe six producing by the end of yeah. this year. Uh, we've got 23 properties yeah. in our sale portfolio. And as you know, that's our royalty generation uh, side of the right. business uh, where those properties are being sold to third parties on a 100 percent right. basis. If they make all the payments, we get a, keep a royalty. Uh, and if they don't make the payments, we get them back. So a unique program, it's what sets us apart really from the other junior royalty companies is, is that royalty generation program. And, yeah. and, and then of course the other big change, and I think what really launched the stock here this year is you know, late 2018 and going into 2019, we started purchasing, producing, and right. near-term producing royalties. So we took a quantum leap from a prof only being recognized as a prospect generator to be actually being uh, recognized in the market as a real royalty company. Yeah. So looking back, you know, when you made that switch from the Mount Hamilton era <laughs> to the royalty model, wow, what a what a great decision that was, because obviously three and a half years later, here we sit at 75 cents a share and probably going a lot higher. Well, we hope so. You know, we're in that sweet spot. Uh, junior royalty companies are you know, a little harder to value than the than the big major and mid tiers who get valued off of cash flow multiples and net asset value. With the juniors, you really have to look at just a few things. The investors, when they're focusing on the due diligence, and, uh, and that is management. Uh, are they executing? Do you like their business model? I mean, some of our competitors who have larger capitalizations than us are more static, just sitting on a royalty. Uh, other ones strictly purchase royalties. Right. And uh, we're both generating royalties and, and generating revenue from the sales, then using that sale, the, uh, that sale money to purchase producing and near-term producing royalties. And, um, you know, it's uh, every, and, and we're at that sweet spot now where every transaction we do moves right. the needle for oh, shareholders. For sure. And I've loved this model from the get-go, but in recent, in the recent year, in, recent months, you know, we've had Eric Sprott join, join our uh, group as an investor and Rick Rule's been with us for about, about a year now, so. Yeah, Rick's been actually been doing some selling. He filed last and sold some, uh, but uh, boy, you know, we, uh, what a change, uh, right, you know, I, th I think we, uh, Rick's stock from just over a year ago, it was yeah. closed on December 31st, 2018. 
Uh, he put in a million dollars and it's worth 15 million today. Yeah. He's taken some off the table there and don't blame him for that. But Eric's come in as a big holder. You know, he's a big, big holder of, of Fenelon. He loves that deposit and, and therefore that royalty. But he's really been, uh, become a real part of our team. Uh, he, he's not only invested in equity, but gave us a $6 million line of credit to be able to go and buy royalties. And then just recently agreed to sell us a half a percent royalty he had on the producing Jarrett Canyon mine. So right. we're actually, we haven't closed that transaction because it takes right. shareholder approval, but we are accruing the royalties on that from the day we signed the deal. So yeah. just, you know, if you look back at the major royal companies and look at, it, at how they perform, performed in the first four years, Royal Gold went from a twenty cent stock to a twelve dollar stock in yeah. just just under four years, and that was really based on just the pipeline royalty. Right. Every time they drill more and find, you know, another million ounces, their stock would go up. And um, I think that started in ninety three, and it was really ninety seven before they even saw a royalty payment. Right, right. So yeah. still a lot of leverage and upside we feel in in illegal gold royalties. Well, absolutely, and the strength of, you, of your team, I think this is a credit to, to you and Jerry in particular. You two work so well together. You're, you're so good at making the deals. Jerry's so good at you know, bringing the properties and packaging things. So it, it's, it's an exceptional team with an exceptional model and what I see as a rising gold market. And the leverage with that is quite exciting. So Trey, hats off to you. Well, and, thanks, yeah, yeah, this, uh, this Recent move in gold has been very exciting, and of course we're in uh, uh, unusual times here. Yeah. You can't can't predict what's going to happen uh, right. uh, going forward. But I think you made the point earlier today that this uh, recent drop in the gold price uh, this last week, very similar to 2008, uh, when when people were bailing out like they were. Uh, they're looking for liquidity in anywhere that they can get it. And, and we had a lot of uh, speculators in the gold trade right. uh, that were getting squeezed out of other positions, and then they started squeezing them out of the gold position. Right. So we think gold's on, on a, actually a pretty strong footing here to, to move higher, but we'll have to get this liquidity situation out of the way right. first. Right, we'll see what other uh, margin calls or redemptions that these funds have to deal with selling their gold. So once that's cleared out, I think it's clear sailing ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Trey, always a pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. Signing off from Toronto. <laughs> <laughs>